Um, and as such, sometimes they're given pretty preferential treatment for it, sometimes they're not. It's a little 50-50 depending on who the emperor is at the time. Um, I just realized that the stream looks a little goofy. I apologize for this. Uh, I'll fix it later. I'm not going to stop my my tangent here. But uh, so anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, the eunuchs find out that this guy is telling them, hey, you know, get rid of the eunuchs, they're assholes. And obviously, being in a position of power to take care of these things, they're not too fond of somebody saying, hey, take away their position of power. So naturally, uh, they throw Zheng Jun out of, out of the area, or out of the building. Uh, have him thrown out by guards, yada, yada, yada. Uh, they are smart enough to realize that maybe this is happening because somebody didn't exactly take a liking to uh, the way that they handled giving out merits for people's conduct. So they just start promoting people left and right. Everybody and their dog. Why not? Uh, luckily, one of the people who gets promoted is Liu Bei, who at this point kind of deserves it, but whatever. Uh, he becomes magistrate of the county of Engzi. Engzi, not Engzi, Engzi. So they set out and reform the administration so thoroughly of the, or uh, reform the administration of that particular region so thoroughly that they're, within a month it's crime free, no crime whatsoever. Everybody's pretty fond of the way that he's handling it. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, but within about four months, a uh, general order is sent out asking for the reduction of military personnel in civil offices. So, I can't remember if this is from the Unix or not. I probably should have noted that, but I'll do better next time. Uh, but yeah, so this is sent out. And Liu Bei is obviously a little bit concerned. Uh, his brothers are a little bit concerned, too. He's won his merits through military service, and this could mean him losing his mer or losing his uh, his governorship. And sure enough, an, an inspector shows up uh, pretty much the next day and doesn't even bother to look at the kingdom, just to look at the area, just starts right off calling Liu Bei a liar and a charlatan and lying about his heritage, lying about his military achievements, lying about anything that he can possibly lie about, basically. Um, so Liu Bei is obviously confused and annoyed. And so he... Do I? Oh, okay. And so he, uh, he gets together with some of his advisors in the region, and, you know, is like, hey, what the fuck, how do I fix this? Yada, yada, yada. Um, and his advisors are like, well, it's pretty obvious that he wants a bribe. Um, if, you know, you could probably pay him off. And Liu Bei is like, I don't, I don't have money for bribes. I didn't, I didn't get any money from all of this. I'm just doing this because I do. How would I have gotten money? So Liu Bei leaves, uh, pretty dejected, and just kind of, just kind of hangs out. And it's important to note right now, because it'll become important very quickly, that Zhang Fei doesn't take too kindly to this. Um, he pretty much immediately starts drinking, and let's see where was I. So after after he finds out about the bribery and everything, and decides I can't do that, I've never wronged anybody, yada yada yada. Um, the inspector spends pretty much the entirety of the next day uh, berating the ever living fuck out of Liu Bei to all of his, all of the local officials and starts forcing false testimony from them, uh, you know, on, on pain of the losing their jobs and whatever. Uh, forcing false te testimony from them, and anytime Liu Bei attempts to refute this, he's stopped at the door by the guardsman, or the doorman, and refused entry. Naturally, this is not a good thing for him. So, Zhang Fei's hammered now. He's completely shit-faced. And he's angry. And he's violent. He finds out that Liu Bei is being denied any defense, so he does pretty much what will become a standard for him throughout this series. A drunken rage. He just gets pissed and goes on a rampage. Uh, gets on his horse, charges to the, the building in question, and terrifies the doorkeepers with just how incredibly infuriated he is as a person. Plus, his usual description of being absolutely insane looking. 
Uh, they just they don't even bother trying to stop him. He just forces his way through, and sees the the inspector in question by the name of Du uh, Du Biao, uh, basically forcing court officials or the officials of the area uh, into false testimony. At which point he goes up, grabs him by the hair, and drags him forcibly into the courtyard, where he lashes him to a post grabs a willow branch, breaks it into an improvised switch, and just starts beating the ever-living shit out of this official, out of this inspector. And uh, Liu Bei finds out what's happening, very politely asks why he's beating the piss out of this instru- uh, this inspector, and being Liu Bei, uh, kind of polite to a fault, uh, ends up freeing the, inspe- the inspector. At which point Guan Yu shows up, and... Basically says, look, uh, I know you're you're super nice and everything. Um, I get it. That's cool. Uh, oh, Chaucer. Let's listen to what Chaucer has to say. Hold on. Tomorrow, my good man. For St. Paul says all that's written well is written down some useful truth to tell. Then take the wheat and let the chaff lie still. Canterbury Tales isn't really my thing. Anyway, but uh, Guan Yu shows up while this guy is bloodied and terrified. And says to Liu Bei, look, uh, I know you're, you're more concerned with, with being a pious and, and nice guy. I get that. But, um, look, we really ought to just kill this wretch. He's not worth it for the Empire. He's bad. And we'll just kill him, uh, leave this place, and figure out what we're going to do from there. We'll just figure out a better scheme next time. But Liu Bei, you know, instead, instead of just murdering him outright, says, uh, look... I'm going to give you this official seal of office. You're in charge now, because you apparently think you can do such, so much better of a job. Um, if I find out that you're wronging any of these people in any way at all, uh, I'm just going to come back and murder you, because you'll deserve it. And that's how we handle things. You know I can. I've got these two. And then they just leave. Takes his brothers and heads on out. Damn, I'm going through stuff quick today. Takes his brothers and heads on out. I'm also not doing any actual gameplay, so that would probably explain it. Why am I doing a... Whatever, I'm sure I'll need one eventually. Um, so they leave. The inspector complains to people in power, as you do when you're kind of a shit. And gets a warrant for this man's... For their arrest. For all three of them. Uh... Obviously, they can't just wander around for a while, so they decide, fuck it, we're, uh, we're just going to go. Uh, they end up going to Liu Hu, uh, Hu being a relative of Liu Bei's, I guess, uh, knows about his noble heritage, and decides, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you, you know, I'm going to give you amnesty and, and protect you from this obviously wrong obviously wrong uh, warrant. So, it's at this point that the eunuchs have basically taken complete control of the government. Um, you know, they've, they've killed everyone who won't stand with them, uh, put people in power who would, that sort of thing, as you do when you do a, a political uprising like this. Uh, Huang Fu Song and Ju Jun are two mighty generals from the last time. They get the shaft and don't get murdered, as far as I can tell. They simply get deposed from office. There we go. Uh, they get deposed from office and basically just go back to their estates. They, I think they lose a little bit of land on the, on the way, too, but it's not really mentioned. Uh, more eunuchs get promoted, you know, because if you're a eunuchs, you promote more eunuchs, I guess. Uh, because of all this... Rebellions just start popping up left and right all throughout the kingdom. Uh, people rebel for the slightest things just because the entire kingdom has gone to shit. Uh, 